Yeah, it's early morning, sun's not up yet. I'm going for a walk. It's supposed to be low tide, but it's not. There is low tide, and then there's low tide. Today it's not that low. Morning. That house wasn't there before. Hmm? The village is growing. Huh? The village is growing. <laughs> it's a local hangout up here. It's like a McDonald's or Wendy's in the States. So everybody hangs out here for coffee. Or without coffee. Seawall. Co coffee in the seawall. Hmm? You think there's fish? No, I mean, uh, the boat. Okay. Well, they're in early. Look at this, uh, this. Look at all this dog dating in the side hand. How are we going to get through there? I Just don't know. They'll run away. Hand, huh? I'll go. They'll run away. Hand. Yeah, but what? Local pack of dogs. Might as well be wolves. Oh, we can't get across here, huh? That's new. What are they waiting for? Hold on a minute. I'm gonna take a video of my own. It's supposed to be low tide, but it's not. It's uh it's a low tide, but it's not it's not a very low tide. We're at the edge of the mangroves here. And uh, along the seawall, they've built these bamboo racks. They're for drying fish. A lot of fish drying going on in the kitchen. Some days you come here and these things will be loaded up with fish from one end to the other. Dried fish. And this is new. This wasn't here before. Somebody's building them on the ocean side house. There's all the little fishes. This beach we're on here is pretty clean for this time of year. As soon as the Habagat gets here, the Southwest Monsoon. Yeah. All the wind comes from, from actually from that direction. Actually from that direction, Southwest. Everything comes in here. All the trash in Cebu. And this beach will be completely littered with trash. Cebu trash. I've been out here with Apple Dog before. Uh, Ooh, somebody put a fence up here. That's new. Uh, somebody put a fence up. I guess they don't want anybody building no beachside houses here. That's all new. Every time we come back, something new. Progress, right? There's a retired bunker boat. It'll rot there for the remainder of its days along with all the trash. Alright, we're heading back to town. Or back to the brown guy. There's a dog just got pregnant this morning. Congratulations! Alright, uh, so that's what they're building right there. A Tanode Outpost. Look out. Only 125,000 pesos. They started this on May 8th. It's supposed to be done on May 18th. Which is today. I don't think it's gonna meet the deadline. Nope. It's supposed to be done today. We get a new lumber mill in town. This is where uh, I've been hearing the chainsaws in the afternoon and morning. Cutting up cocoa lumber. This was not right next door in my house. Alright, 
I gotta share this with, hmm? with my viewers. Huh? I was uh, walking through the Super Metro grocery store the other day, and uh, I found my favorite cereal, like Honey that. Bunches of Oats. Now, when I eat cereal, that's my favorite with almonds. So I bought a couple boxes. They were the equivalent was like five dollars and eighty-five cents a box, which is very similar to U.S. prices, I guess. But I opened a box the other night and had had a bowl of cereal for supper. Wrapped the box back up, stuck it in the pantry. How can you go there, honey? You go. I'm gonna get some stuff here. Get some. And uh, you gotta stop and get, get a load. I mean, I woke up this morning, pulled the box out, and it was full of ants. I guess ants like honey bunches of oats. Didn't bother anything else, just my honey bunches. Must be the sugar. So now I gotta go back to Super Metro and buy more honey bunches. Gotta figure out a way to keep them. Uh... Hey, get right there. Don't be pooping in my yard. Go, go. Don't be pooping in my yard. You too, go. Go, come on. What's wrong with you? Look at your ear. What happened to you? Huh? You're a sorry looking guy. Hmm? So anyway. <sighs> I'm gonna skip breakfast as well. Just gotta make some more coffee. We live about 12 clicks north of the city of Kalbaya, in the jungle along the coast. If you notice the wires up above on the right hand side of the street, it's starting to look a lot like Cebu or Manila. I'm just kidding, but just a few short years ago we had just the one main power line and a cable feed. Now we have at least two Wi-Fi providers in addition to the cable uh, in the Brongai, and each time they sell new service to someone, a new wire goes up. So in essence, there's a wire for every customer, and it's beginning to look like a tangled mess, just like everywhere else in the Philippines. Alongside our property, it's becoming a distraction from our view. Now I have to trim the mango tree more often. I thought fiber optic was supposed to eliminate all this mess. We're heading through the Barangay main intersection. <laughs> and coincidentally, it looks the same at rush hour. But, uh, yeah, it's not a big brown guy. I think there's maybe, last time it was counted, there was maybe 700 people. There's probably about 800 people now. But it's uh, it's a small village. Um, but we seem to have a, an extraordinary amount of sorry, sorry stores. Just on our street alone, I think we've got eight sorry, sorry stores. And there's like... Uh, four streets in the Barangay, or maybe five, the one in the jungle. Uh, so, yeah, there's an untold number of sorry, sorry stores in our Barangay. And we're coming up on our, uh, at the edge of the, the village here, this is where everybody dumps their garbage, and the garbage truck right there, and the garbage truck comes to town a couple of days a week, supposedly, and picks up the garbage. Sometimes I've seen that thing overflowing. They don't pick up the broken bags, they just pick up what they can throw in the truck and everything else remains lying on the ground. I used to ride my motorcycle out of here, and the one thing I like to tell people that uh, there's a hierarchy on the road when you're driving, a, especially when you're driving a motorcycle, uh, you gotta be careful and watch out for animals and kids and people and uh, coconuts and everything else. But the most aware uh, living thing on the road are chickens. They see you come a mile away and they're gone. The next uh, animals that might have better awareness than people are dogs. You rarely see a cat on the road. Uh, maybe they're just too smart. I don't know, but. Uh, children have a sense to get out of the road than most adults. Most adults just stand there and let you run over them. But uh, 
in any case the road's not good here um, they're building a resort just uh, we just passed it to the left up on top of the mountain that overlooks our village i'm not sure what kind of a resort it is but the big trucks that keep coming through uh with dirt and gravel and rock they're I mean, they're massive trucks they're just tearing this road up and uh, i think the brown guy has been after this company to actually do some repairs to the road and it don't right here on the left hand side it kind of replaced repaired that but uh the road is bad uh, several years ago they started redoing this entire road with concrete um, and we finally thought we're going to have a good road coming in but uh they messed up the poor uh, they they hire these uh non-qualified uh, people to oversee these projects and they have, don't have a clue as to how to pour concrete they don't understand the mix they don't understand the slope they don't understand what the correct size gravel to use i've seen literally i've seen boulders uh that are five to six inches in diameter used in this mix you know the round the round uh, eroded boulders that you find in the ocean or a river yeah, i've seen big rocks in this mix and uh you're not if it's not angular concrete will not adhere to it and one of the problems uh when you pour concrete i don't know if many of my viewers are aware uh, of the sand situation in the world but the beaches around the world are are, are decreasing the sand is decreasing because all the ocean sand is being used for construction now you take all the construction that's going on in the middle east like dubai they cannot they live on the desert but they cannot use desert sand for uh concrete desert sand is eroded and it's uh, a granule sand in the desert is smooth it's round as opposed to ocean sand which is very angular angular sand is what is needed to make good concrete so consequently uh none of the desert sand in the middle east is used for construction it's all pilfered from the oceans worldwide there's a actually a huge black market uh for for sand uh, a lot of stuff is being stolen from beaches in nearby islands in the pacific and the indian ocean there's huge dredging ships that actually suck up all the sand and deliver it to the middle east um, and if if you uh if you have time you can look it up on on youtube there's several documentaries about black market sand and how the beaches are disappearing worldwide uh, one day there will be no more ocean sand but in any case maybe they'll learn to build with something else up here on the left hand side you see that used to be all a rice field and uh somebody apparently bought all that property and then we started building something we do have a hardware store here we're not the, they call this the crossing uh, we just i think went about 1.6 kilometers from the house to the main highway here and they have a hardware store here now which would have been nice back in the day when we were building the house but it is a little bit more pricey than driving all the way to town uh, but i think it's the convenience factor uh, this is the main highway here uh, H26 or Asian Highway 26 and it's in part uh, part of the greater Asian Highway system which is which is found pretty much all over Asia and East Asia this road is basically funded by some of the larger nations uh, in Japan Korea and possibly China and it extends from uh, Luzon all the way through the Visayas all the way down to southern Mindanao This river here is a pretty big river. It's the uh, Hibatong River. And just uh, coming up here, the village of Lenoy. And on the other side of Lenoy here, um, now this road to the left where that truck is going there, that goes up to Katarman, which uh, is in northern Samar. This little tributary here is uh, just an offshoot of the Hibatong River, uh, but it warrants its own bridge. It's uh, a lot of water. I mean, just live maybe uh, just a few kilometers north of the airport. When we fly into Calviac Airport, it takes us literally less than 10 minutes to get to the house. And that's with traffic. Today I'm taking an alternate route past the airport because of road construction. 
It never ends here. The diversion road was built uh, between six and eight years ago, and it was meant to divert traffic around Kalbayak City to avoid the city center. Unfortunately, and because of poor planning, cargo trucks and passenger buses still ply the highway that cuts through the heart of the city. From the turnoff, the road was constructed all the way to Santa Margarita, but with no roadside amenities or services like fuel or bus stops and eateries, there is little reason for any through traffic to take this route. Kalbayag City is a major stop off from the Port of Allen to the north on the way to Cap Logan to the south, and all major buses stop at just a couple of terminals within the city proper. Here's a new place up on the right that uh, just opened up since the pandemic and uh, Terry and I have eaten there a couple times and I must say the food is pretty good. Now we're back at the main highway where the, uh, the new coastal bypass originates in San Policarpo. Uh, the bridge is not completed yet, so it's still not open, but many people find this a popular place to get their morning exercise on, uh, walking in the mornings or the evenings, and Terry and I have done so as well. From here, it's just under two and a half kilometers to the city center, uh, and we're going actually south of town, another couple kilometers to the Mango Lounge. We're going to make some stops first and pick up a few items, and then we're going to head to the lounge for lunch. Actually, some guys comment that they could never drive here, but driving here is, there's a method to all this chaos and madness. Uh, there's just a couple of rules of the road that you have to adhere to. Uh, the first one being roast tonnage as the right of way. Uh, the second rule of thumb that I practice is, he who gets to that spot first has the right of way. If they get there first, let them go. I'm, I'm never in a big hurry here. Uh, it's not going to get you anywhere faster except to the hospital. Hmm. And then again, you might just lay on the road for an hour before anything happens. Uh, getting an ambulance here is next to impossible. And if you do get one, it'll take you forever to get through traffic. I equate driving on a scooter here to getting good exercise. It's like motocross riding, only with obstacles. The exercise is definitely both physical and mental. For me, just a 12 kilometer jaunt to town and back on my scooter prepares me well for a good nap. If any of you have watched uh, the last few videos that I put out, you'll know that I bought me a scooter. Um, I got tired of fighting with Terry over the, taking the car. She wants the car and I don't have enough transportation, so I need my scooter back. Um, generally, I like to ride a motorcycle, but I bought the scooter because uh, it was uh, it's a click 160 and has that extra horsepower that I feel that you need as a motorcyclist to keep you out of trouble. Having power on a motorcycle, can you can avoid situations that you can't when you don't have power. So I've got the 160, and my biggest problem is that it's a scooter, it's an automatic. And for the first few days riding this thing, I, I've got my, this habit of wanting to clutch. Uh, and on this thing, the left uh, handle is not the clutch, it's a brake. So I, I had a, I was probably pretty comical trying to ride this thing for the first few days in traffic. People looking at me like a crazy corner. But uh, anyway, I got it down, I got the hang of it, and I'm starting to like the automatic a little bit. Uh, the thing that I like most about the click is. I can drive through water puddles and mud puddles and not get my feet wet anymore. So that's one advantage. And two, I've got some storage capacity on it. So if I run to town like I do, uh, like I did this morning, just for some lemons and carrots, I've got a place to put it. I don't have to worry about hanging on to it. So the Click 160 will do me fine uh, as a backup mode of transportation when I'm not Terry's driver or when she don't have the car. 
but uh, I think me and this click will get along just fine. Some days like today when uh, I have a certain destination and I might go by there and there's not a parking spot, I might just drive around the block a couple times until I do find a parking spot. I'm not going to force myself into a spot that I might regret later. So I'll go around the block a couple times, check out the sites, and uh, eventually something will open up and I'll pull in. If I can say one good thing about Calbayac City is that uh, when we first moved here in 2013, this mall right here was not here. There was really nothing here. We had uh, one local supermarket and it wasn't really a, a grand supermarket. They didn't have half the stuff we needed. For example, we had to drive all the way to Cap Logan just to find Kikkoman soy sauce. So there really was nothing in Calbayac in 2013. But to give Calbayac some credit, in the last 11 years, the city has just exploded. We have a super metro, a Gaisano mall, uh, we have actually three grocery stores now. We've got a Pure Gold. We have a City Hardware, uh, and we've, built, we've got uh, a half a dozen new hotels. So this little town is just going crazy. I'm happy for it. I think Terry's happy for it. We uh, we don't have to drive to uh, great lengths to find what we need. We used to drive to Taco Open just to go shopping, but we don't have to do that anymore. I can't remember when the last time we've been to Taco Open. It's about a three and a half hour drive, so I just soon stay home. We have everything we need right here in Cal Bayag. We are here at the Mango Lounge on the eastern side of town, where British Filipino chef and owner Christian aims to feed his foreign brethren from his custom menu, which will satisfy almost any picky expat eater. And he does a good job at it. Whenever I leave here, I am definitely fully replenished and always in need of a good nap when I get home. And I know someone else who will definitely sleep this one off.